Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel once again. So recently I did a review on the Flash Forge Adventure 4, and today we're going to be looking at the Adventure 3. Now this is one model underneath the 4, and as you can see, it's still in the box. It is slightly smaller, but we're going to get this opened up. We're going to check it out. We're going to do a review on this, and we're going to see how this one compares to this one and go from there. So let's open it up. Let's take a look. Let's see what's inside. So we have the power cord. Looks like we got an instruction manual after sales service, something. I have no idea what that says. Comes with a really tiny spool of filament. It's not even a spool, it's just a little bit of PLA just kind of wound in. 0 0.05 kilograms. That's not very much. A little toolkit with an extra nozzle. Well, it's not very heavy, that's for sure. Okay, so here we have the Adventure 3. Over here we have the Adventure 4. You can see how much of a difference in size these actually are. This one is significantly smaller and a lot light, less weight than compared to the Adventure 4. But we're gonna get this turned on, we're gonna get this set up, and we're gonna run a print and see how well this one does. I would like to point out that this one does have a much smaller build volume, as you can see right here. It's only 150 by 150 by 150 millimeters compared to the 84, which is 220, 250, something like that. So significantly smaller. So this did come with a quick start guide. Now, if it's anything like the Adventure 4, this isn't gonna be very hard at all to set up. So I'm not gonna really read through all these instructions. They're all pretty basic. The one thing I would like to point out though is that it did not come with a USB stick with any test models or anything like that. So you would have to provide your own in order to print anything. But let's go ahead and we'll get this plugged in and see how this works. As you can see, the power cord plugs just right into the bottom on the right hand side of the printer. And this door comes right off for easy access to get to where you need to put the filament. I don't, however, like the fact that the whole door just kind of comes off. I wish it kind of had like a hinge, so it opened or whatnot, kind of like the AD4. Like this one, swings wide open, it has a hinge, so it doesn't come falling off and yeah. Okay, so let's get this powered on. We'll see how fast this actually loads up. Apparently it sings a song to me, or whatever that was. I don't know, but that was kind of cool. Okay, so it's all loaded up. Took what, maybe 10, 15 seconds. So we have build tools and filament. Not a whole lot of options. The screen is significantly smaller. It's probably only two and a half inches compared to the other one, which is maybe four inches, five inches. So. Not a big deal, but you can see what you need to do. So if we go to tools, let's go to settings. I'm not gonna calibrate this at all. I'm gonna assume it already is, but I guess we'll find out. So it says in the directions that once it's finished, press down dotted line area and draw out the removable build plate. Well. There's no dotted lines anywhere. This doesn't really remove unless I bend these tabs out. 
to pull it off. So I don't know if they're missing a, a plate that's bendable, like the picture there, but there is not anything bendable on this. This is just a solid piece of glass. I cannot bend that. So let's go ahead and just get this filament loaded in. So we're just gonna go to filament, load, click okay, and now we'll wait for this to heat up. And as you can see, this is heating up really fast. This isn't taking long at all. So we're loading in the filament. Now this doesn't isn't on a spool, so it's kind of hard to keep this stay there. So let's just put the cover back on. Here you can see the filament feeding through. It's kind of hard to see. It's just going very, very slowly. So we'll load this until we start to see the filament come out of the nozzle. Okay, so we can stop now that it's coming out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try and print something. I, like I said, I didn't calibrate this. I didn't home anything. We're just gonna do it right out of the box and see what happens. And if for some reason it's not calibrated, sure, I'll go back and I'll fix it. But we're gonna hope that it is. So I already have a USB. I'm gonna go to build. Maybe, there it goes. It's a little, little slow. Go back. Load in the USB and let's go to, we'll do the Flexi Rex and we'll print that and we'll see how that one does. It says two hours and 29 minutes. We'll see how long that actually takes. So we'll just click build. Let it copy its file. And then we'll let it do its thing. Let's see what happens. I don't know why I got a filament error. Let's just click okay though. Let's try and just going, maybe it wasn't preheated. So let's preheat. So as you can see, we got a printing now. And we're gonna let this run. We'll do a little time lapse of this and see how this turns out. Okay, well that didn't work out at all as well as I had hoped. As you can see, this filament just broke because it's not on a spool or anything, it's loose. It got tangled while it was trying to get fed through and then it snapped, so I lost the print and then pulling it off, I, I broke it and absolutely destroyed it trying to take it off, but I did reprint it again. So here is the new piece that I reprinted. Let's see if I can take it off of the build plate this time without breaking it. And shattering it into a million pieces like I did the last time. And considering I don't have a removable build plate, this is stuck on here pretty good. There we go. So new Flexi Rexy. And the detail looks like it came out really good. There are some little print lines that you can see, but Overall, I think it came out really good. So yeah, it works. It's not the biggest build plate in the world, but that's okay, it does the job. So I did have to use a tripod just to hold the filament on there because if you take a look at this, This does not fit inside. I mean, it does barely, but it doesn't, it doesn't turn. So 
if your spool is too big, it's not gonna fit in this machine. So you'll need something to hold it and stand it. So I just used a tripod and it did the job for now, but I could easily reprint uh, a stand of some sort to let it sit there. Or I'd have to find a smaller spool that'll actually fit in there. So let me talk about a few things that I like and dislike about this. First, right off the bat, I didn't get a removable build plate. That's really frustrating, and I had to print right on top of the glass. I did email them and contact them and, and let them know the situation, so hopefully they'll send me one so I'll be able to use it. But I did have to recalibrate it to actually go lower because the build plate would have sat higher up. And if you look at the AD4, this just easily removes and it's flexible enough that I can pop it off. But when I didn't get that one with the 83, kind of doesn't do me any good. Another thing about this is that they didn't provide a flash drive. So I had to use my own, which isn't a big deal. However, even when I turned this on, it says in the manual that you can go to their little test print file, but that wasn't loaded onto my machine underneath the internal storage that they had. So there was nothing there, it was empty. So I couldn't even print the, the base model that they had. One of the features that I do like though, however, is that it does come with an extra uh, nozzle and they're quick and easy. And as you can see right here, there's just two little tabs you push in and this will pop right out and you can easily place the other one back in its spot and change them very easily without much work at all. There's no unscrewing, there's nothing like that. I really don't care for the door for where the filament holder is. It just comes right off, you can't close it or, or it doesn't stay open, which is a little frustrating, not a big deal, but like I said before, the filament does not fit in there. So you'll need something else and you'll have to leave this open in order to have the filament run into it and feed in. So this machine does boot up pretty quickly. Um, it is rather quiet while printing as long as the door is closed and that maintains the heat. And it does make a fun little sound when you turn it on. But as far as the actual screen goes, playing around with it, when I was loading in the filament, uh, the, the second time, when I went to load, it would not feed it through. So I had to actually go to manual and, and wait for it. And then I can feed it through, but it took forever. It was, you can choose between 100 millimeters per second, 200 and 300. I had it at 200, but It'll feed in 200 millimeters, but not at any given speed. It goes at like one millimeter a second. So it takes forever to actually feed it through the tube to get into the nozzle. Also, if you notice before, when I started the print, I had that filament error problem. And right when I went to print, it said filament error and I couldn't do anything. So I actually had to go into the settings and disable if it'll get to it. So filament check, I actually had to disable that. So you can see right there that it has the little, little circle with the line. So for anybody else, if you have this problem and you get filament error, just disable that. However, I'm pretty sure then that it doesn't know when it runs out of filament. So mine was just printing in midair, but nothing was coming out because the filament broke because it was a tangled mess. So I don't know how to fix that. I don't know if that's an issue with the software, the firmware. I'll have to dive more deeper into that and find out and I'll be talking to FlashForge some more and getting their input to find out what's actually going on and why it's doing that. But disabling it fixed the problem and I was able to print. The one other thing that I don't like about this printer is the build plate size. I get why they did it for reasons, but it's really, really small. And if you're looking to print anything bigger than 150 millimeters, it's not gonna happen. It's 150 by 150 by 150. 
and you, you just can't really print anything of a larger scale, which for probably a lot of teachers or things like that, or, or people just starting out, that might not be a big deal to them. But for me and the certain things that I do, I need to be able to print big pieces because you've seen some of my pieces that I've cast before. And there's no way I'm printing it on this thing. I would have to slice it into 400 pieces to be able to print that. The prints do come out really nice though. As you can see, I mean, it, it looks just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's flat, it's smooth, it works. So yeah, but, I mean, if I had a removable build plate, that would have been nicer, but even without it, I can still print and it still works. So that's a, that's a bonus. The one other thing I do like about this is that it is a very light machine. This isn't heavy at all. It probably only weighs probably less than 10 pounds. So it's, it's really easy to move compared to the 84, which is quite heavy. And that's something that I don't wanna be moving around all the time if I don't have to. So overall, would I recommend this machine? Uh, I can honestly say that I can't just based off the experience that I had with it, with some of the issues of it not loading the filament, the filament error, not getting the heated bed plate. Those are some things that I did not like, and that's the nicest way I can say it. Um, however, the 84, this one is awesome. I would highly recommend getting this one over the 83, just for the pure fact that it has a bigger size, it has better features, this one also has a camera as well, but this one works better. You can now do it live and, and view it since they updated their software. So I would definitely recommend this one way before I would ever recommend this one to anybody. Even though it does work, it prints just fine, but overall, I, no, I, I just can't recommend this printer. Okay guys, so I did hear back from Flash Forge and they told me that they sent the Adventure 3 Pro. However, this one says Adventure 3 Lite, but they said the Pro is equipped with the glass build plate and not the removable one. So I'm not sure if this actually is the Pro or if it's the Lite, but I just wanted to point that out. It does have the glass build plate, but I cannot remove it. And I would have, it would have been nice to have the removable build plate instead of the glass one, just because it makes it easier to remove the prints. But not a big deal. I was able to get it removed just fine. But yeah, for those that are wondering, supposedly the Pro comes with the glass build plate, but the light does not. So there you go. Hope that helps some of you. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out each week. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.